you've made it to Cairo Hustle Live. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession. This episode is brought to you by Clothes for Cairo, Cairo Sushi, Barbara Eaton's 56 Day Chiropractic Boot Camp, California Jam, Move Well University, The Black Diamond Club, Pure Cairo Notes, The Cairo Dex App, Dr. Alok Trivedi, Cairo Spark, Cairo Graham, Chiropractic Wealth Management, Eight Weeks to Wellness, Integrative Freedom, and Element Mattresses. Let's hustle. Hey, good morning, everybody. Jim Chester here with Denise Geyer Evans. Uh, I am coming from Grand Junction, the Grand Valley of Colorado, and uh, she is in Bordentown, New Jersey, where she actually grew up. So um, we're going to dive into what her story is a little bit. Um, but before I get into the conversation with her on the Cairo Hustle Morning Edition, I'm going to uh, recognize our sponsor today, and that's MoveWell University. MoveWell University is run by Todd Pickman. If you guys want to incorporate more mobility into your practice members and get them more physically fit to hold their adjustments better, reach out to Dr. Todd Pickman. He is a master of uh, click funnels and getting people the proper ways to get talk set up. So he's just got so many great uh, adjuncts to what he's doing with MoveWell. But if you guys are interested, reach out to Dr. Todd Pickman. All right. Thank you sp for sponsoring us, uh, MoveWell University. So Denise, let's hey. talk, let's talk about you. Um, <laughs> let's, let's talk about your why. Why chiropractic? How did you get into this profession? Uh, well, I, I didn't really choose it. It, it chose me, Jim. I uh, was going to school, I was in an undergrad program, and I thought I was going to be a, me a medical doctor. At the time, I was working at a hospital. I'd probably been working there for about four years, and I was a phlebotomist. So I, I took this genetics class, and it was uh, a difficult class. And what happened was, in genetics, you had to breed these fruit flies. <laughs> Drosophila melanogasters. I'll never, I won't forget that name. But anyway, uh, you had to pay great attention to these little fruit flies. And what happened is my fruit flies, they wouldn't mate. Apparently, they didn't like each other. So and believe it or not, I failed this genetics class in undergrad. And I ended up taking it again. And I ended up sitting next to this guy, Bob. And Back in the day, I was uh, I was a punk rocker, believe it or not. I had like crazy hair. Uh, I was a DJ on the radio station. We had that in common. We had just talked about that earlier. And I hear I'm sitting next to this very straight laced man and we became close friends. And he said to me, uh, what are you going to do when when you graduate? And I said, you know, I really don't know. He said, well, I'm going to be I'm going to be a chiropractor. And I was like, well, what's that? <laughs> and and uh, he he said, oh, it's a back doc. And I was like, a back doc? He goes, yeah. He goes, a bunch of guys that we're all going down to this school in, in Georgia. We're going to go check it out. Do you, do you want to come? <laughs> so it was just the, it was like, you know, it was the oddest thing. And, and I said, yes, that was what was even odder that I said, oh, yeah, sure. I'll go along for, for <laughs> I would have never normally hung out with him before, but um so yeah, that, that started the journey and we went down to life and the first person that I met was Sid Williams. I know that that story you told me before we went on uh, to the interview session, uh, it really touched my heart. And I would like you to just share your experience of how you met Sid and maybe talk a little bit about that uh, dropping the keys. <laughs> <laughs> well, back then, you know, Sid had that little house. I don't know if you've ever if you've ever seen it. I think it's still there. Let's hope it's still on the campus. But it was a small building where his office was. And he um, <laughs> so, so that we said, you know, we want to see the college. And I had no idea who this guy was. I had no idea what chiropractic was. I mean, I was down there with like four very handsome men. I think that might have been the motivation. <laughs> but um, so Sid welcomes us into his office and behind him, he has like all this football memorabilia and, you know, he's a big guy and he's a big presence. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really have to know him. I think that I, I could feel him. And so he started talking about in his Southern voice and how Sid spoke, you know, um, he kept calling all the guys, boy, boy. <laughs> Uh, one guy had an earring in his ear and he's like, boy, what you got going on there? And I just kind of sat with my hands in my lap. And uh, he said, this is when I was playing for, for Georgia. And 
And then he started talking about the philosophy of chiropractic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's and talk he, about that. Yeah, and then he started talking about dropping keys. And honestly, I had absolutely no idea what the hell he was talking about. But he did. He held them and he dropped them. And and I just kept looking at him and, and I said, this guy is passionate mm -hmm. about what he's doing. And I don't really get it because I've never been adjusted. I've never been to a chiropractor. But I want to do what he's doing. That's so cool. And that's how it started. That's so cool. That, that, that story, I think, is uh, very powerful because I think so many people, um, they don't know where they're going in their like, early 20s. They don't know what they're doing with their life. And sometimes we do uh, get some type of uh, intervention with our course of action for life. And now you've been practicing for, what, 25 years? Yeah, over 25 years. Wow. And that's, the, you know, that's a testament to uh, the chiropractic lifestyle and taking care of people. I think that that's a very special thing that you've done. Um, let's talk a little bit about your chiropractic career now that you've told us this awesome story about <laughs> meeting, meeting Sid. But before we jump in that, you know, I, I've done all these chiropractic screenings and I meet people all the time that say, I don't believe in chiropractic. So you know what I do, Denise? I get my keys out of my pocket and I drop them to the ground <laughs> and I say, chiropractic's just like gravity. It works yeah. whether you believe it or not. <laughs> yeah. And then I say, I say, here's our card, call us when you're ready, I high five them. <laughs> yeah, it drives the point home, doesn't it? It does. And you can't argue people, with that. No, it makes people like do this. Yeah, and that's exactly <laughs> what Sid did to me. I had a little bit of a different reaction. I just <laughs> shut up and sat there. <laughs> So, so any, yeah. 25 years plus in practice, let's talk a little bit about your journey. Okay. Well, um, so I'll start, I'll pick up from there again. So I went home and my mother said to me, you know, how was your trip? I said, it was great. She said, well, did you, you know, what did you learn from? I said, I learned I'm going to be a chiropractor. And she just said, well, what's that? I said, mom, I really don't know, but I, I have this feeling that this is what I'm supposed to do. And my mom was kind of used to this kind of behavior from me. I have always followed that inner voice inside. Uh, even when I didn't have all the answers and um, the statistics, uh, I just follow that voice. And, uh, and I was a rebel. And I think to be a chiropractor, you have to have that little rebel deep down inside, you know? Um, so I left, I packed up my bags, I went to chiropractic school and there I remained. I graduated from life and in the interim I met some amazing people. I was a huge supporter at uh, a DE, that, that was like my home, you know, listening to these people and listening to Sid. Uh, and then I met two chiropractors, Jennifer and Palmer Pete, and um, they were, you know, big into pediatrics, they had written some, some they had written a book. They they were on the speaking circuit. And I also had Larry Webster as a teacher when I was in school, which was an honor, a great honor. And uh, Jennifer and Palmer had never had an associate before. So I, I basically begged them if I could work with them. And so that's what I did when I graduated as I went up to Vermont and I worked in a, a very big practice. You know, we saw a thousand patients a week and I'd say probably 70% of them were kids and pregnant women. So that was my experience and that was my experience of what chiropractic was supposed to be like and it really um shaped me yeah I, I think that you know you find a lot of passion when you can work around people that are high producers and you can meet people you know in the community that are actually loving the service of chiropractic and you see the the families transform um, I think that that's uh, super empowering when you get a chance to be a fledgling chiropractor going into a high volume situation. And really, I think so many people don't realize how important chiropractic is for women and children, especially pregnant women. And uh, going and being, I guess, having direct influence from Webster. Let's talk about that a little bit. <laughs> he was a character. Um, <laughs> I, I, I didn't, he, he used to mentor at the clinic that was downtown and I didn't spend a lot of time down there, but I did have him for classes and, um, you know, just being in his class and learning firsthand about, you know, pediatrics and chiropractic from Webster, like there's nothing that replaces that. So, um, I, you know, I wasn't very close with him, but uh, he was a mentor. Yeah, you know, I, I the practice I helped uh um, be a part of us, part of a practice outside of Chicago. And uh, Dr. Mike, I'll never forget this. He was trained, he's trained certified in the Webster's technique. And uh, we were out one night and uh, we had a miracle at the clinic the day that day. And he turned a baby 
and yeah. uh, like I I don't know we were just a, a bit off of our rockers, but I was like this guy could turn babies, <laughs> <laughs> and it works. <laughs> yeah, and like I was like this is such an amazing like process that we can have the hands of healing, not just to remove the subluxation, but when you're trained on the, the human body, you can then make an impact by, you know, understanding the the way that children are being birthed and making sure that there's a, a an easy pregnancy. I think that, that that was one of the most mind blowing things I ever heard is he turned a baby. Yeah. Well, when I worked at Jennifer, uh, when I worked up in Vermont with the, with the Pete's at the time, I mean, the cases that we encountered, I, I, I just never experienced anything like that in, in, in school. And uh, I think even to this day, it's still left an impact on me, you know, the, the kids with autism and, you know, the amount of pregnant women. But I, I was able to get my hands on people. And that's and that, you know, and that's practice. Right. Mm -hmm, and so mm -hmm. I had a great opportunity, like right out of the gate, which I'm forever uh, grateful for. That's why they don't call it chiropractic perfect. I know. <laughs> uh, so I thought I was going to stay in Vermont uh, at the time. My, my ex-husband and I practiced together up there. But as as life would have it, it threw me a curveball and my mother became very ill. Uh, she was diagnosed with cancer. And so I came back to New Jersey and then I started covering practices for people. And I was very disheartened because of the way that I noticed some of these chiropractors were practicing. I had, I had no clue that like even giving flu vaccines were going on in some clinics. And I was talking chiropractic to, to these mothers, but it was more, you know, no, don't talk about that. We just talk about the back and neck pain. This is like auto accident cases. And um, I said that I can only do this for a very short period of time. I need to open up an office. And then, so that's when uh, my office um, came to fruition in Bordentown. And that, that was not an easy road either. No, that kind of makes me sad, actually. And, uh, you know, I, I very rarely get like the, the hair on my arm standing up when people tell me yeah. stories. But I know that you said that it wasn't easy, like we're, we're going to lead into, but it wasn't easy for you. They, they actually put petitions up against you starting to practice. They did. My town did. Yeah. Do you, do you mind sharing with us about the struggle? I mean, because honestly, the struggle of what you went through is the same struggle that almost every chiropractor goes through somewhere down the line. Yeah, I um, when I well, so I came back and I was living in my parents home at the time and I was uh, six months pregnant and my mother was dying of terminal cancer. So I was her hospice care provider and I said, I have to open up a practice and we found an office space. And what happened is it wasn't zoned correctly for our usage. So, you know, simple procedure, you just go to the town hall and you ask for a change in zoning, but it wasn't so simple. They didn't want a chiropractor. For whatever reason, they just didn't want a chiropractor. You know, we have town meetings and maybe two people show up. So I go to ask for this variance and the place is packed. And I, and I had, and I, and I, so I literally gave, I stood up and gave a lay lecture. I said, here's why I want to be a chiropractor in this town. And in all of the, it wasn't personal. So everyone says they just wanted more retail in our town as opposed to more professionals. Um, I took it personally <laughs> and, um, and I, and I, and I felt like uh, it would have been easy to just walk away from that. You know, I had a, di a dying mother. I was pregnant uh, and, uh, and I was poor, very, very, very poor at the time. And uh, it would have been easy to just kind of walk away from that, but I had to stand up for the principal in chiropractic. And so I fought and I hired a lawyer and uh, and I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> that's such, I mean, that that's that's like, you know, David versus Goliath type story. <laughs> and, and, that, and that you had a chance to overcome even the greatest obstacle of being approved in your hometown to practice what you have the passion to give to the community. Yeah, I, I, it was hard. I took it really personally. It's like I went to school for so long to do this and all I really wanted to do was serve my community. And I was being told, no, you can go do it somewhere else, but just not in here. And like, who's going, how can you do that? You can't do that. That's not okay. What, what year is this? You know? So, um, 
I'm a lot like you. I don't take no very well. And uh, if there's a will, there's a way type mentality mm -hmm. with me. And, you know, from our pre-chat, you know, there's a big vision for what we need to do to get chiropractic out there on a larger scale. And I, I think that what you did, uh, set, uh, you know, a lot of these, like you, a lot of chiropractors that I meet have these, like, uh, amazing chiropractic careers. But every one of you have some type of a... Uh, I had to get through this barrier to get where I wanted to be story yeah. and whether, whether it's raising kids in a practice or, I mean, you did that too, right? I mean, kid, you, you had, you had, how many kids did you have? Two. Two. And you, you raised them while practicing full time, right? Yes. So let's share about being a mama practitioner. I got that, that terminology from Pam Jarbo. And <laughs> She's what, great. what was it like to be a mom and running a practice full time? Well, I, I was lucky in that I was married to a chiropractor at the time. So we really split our office hours and the priority was the kids. So when he was in the office, I was home with the children and, and vice versa. So that, I don't, I didn't find that as a, as, as a challenge. I thought it was a blessing really to be able to have my kids walk in and out of the office. I didn't have a home office or anything like that, but um, it was fun. You know, I got to see my children and I got to do exactly what I, what I love. So mm -hmm. it was it was really a blessing. Yeah, one of the things I'm going to be doing as we move this Cairo Hustle live stream down the line is I'm going to be interviewing uh, spouses of chiropractors. And I'm going to be talking about what it means to have a chiropractic family and mm -hmm. what it means to implement the chiropractic lifestyle into the family. So that gives me an opportunity to ask you this next question. I know after the the practice has been doing what it's been doing and you've been taking care of your community, you saw that there was a void in your local area and you did what? Well, um, I didn't see there was a void. Well, yes, I did see there was a void, um, but I actually had a dream, Jim. Um, one night I woke up from a dream. I don't know if you've ever had those dreams that like shake you to the core. Well, this was one of them and I had no intentions of opening up a second business. I had talked about it because I love to cook and I'm a, a, a geek when it comes to like reading cookbooks, but I never thought, you know, I was kind of on easy street, you know, I was practicing three and a half days a week. I had Friday, Saturdays and Sundays off. So it was, you know, life is good. I'm traveling all over the place and I had this dream. And I woke from this dream and it was this voice in my ear. It was so loud when I woke up and it said properly fueled. And that was it. And I knew what I, and I, and there was no elaborate dream behind it. It was like, I knew what it was meant for. And that was about four and a half years ago that that happened. And, you know, it's that little voice in the back of my head that kept gnawing at me all day long, properly fueled, properly fueled, properly fueled. And I'm like, what, I'm supposed to open a restaurant or something now? <laughs> so I, what I did is I, you know, I listened to innate and I wrote it down and I said, well, okay, if this is, you know, I'm having a conversation with myself, obviously, but I'm like, if this is really meant to be, then that domain name will be available because I think that's a pretty cool name and that somebody has to have taken that and it was <laughs> available and that was four years ago and then I sat on it. And I waited, I waited for innate to provide and it did in a big way. And it, it was almost like I was just, someone was pushing me, pushing me in that direction to where I couldn't ignore it anymore. And so my, the restaurant opened May, uh, May of last year and it's been a crazy ride, crazy ride. <laughs> made it to Cairo Hustle Live. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession. This episode is brought to you by Clothes for Cairo, Cairo Sushi, Barbara Eaton's 56 Day Chiropractic Boot Camp, California Jam, Move Well University, The Black Diamond Club, Pure Cairo Notes, The Cairo Dex App, Dr. Alok Trevetti, Cairo Spark, Cairo Graham, Chiropractic Wealth Management, Eight Weeks to Wellness, Integrative Freedom, and Element Mattresses. Let's hustle. And I know you said that uh, back to your easy street of practice and traveling, now you feel a little stretched. But yes, when, I feel but, very stretched. But when, you, but when you give a lot to your community, um, what does it do for you innately then? What does that do for you to have started this restaurant and seeing how you're transforming the community with healthy food? 
I, I have so many stories in just this very short time frame that people that have reached out to me, you know, you go out to eat and it's like, oh, that was a really great meal. But this is different. People write me letters saying, thank you. Thank you for creating a space where I can bring my family. My kids can't eat dairy. They have gluten sensitivities. Um, and, and, and now we can, there's some place where we can come and thank you for teaching us about this. And then there's that bridge between nutrition and chiropractic. So it's, it's like a platform for me to be able to talk about the chiropractic story in a very, um, safe space for people, you know, I'm feeding them. They're kind of at my mercy. <laughs> but, but, but it goes back to the, the, the four dimensional lifestyle. It's the food, it's the body, it's the mind and it's the adjustment. Mm -hmm. And what I tell people is when I schedule them in for uh, their first visit, I say, okay, so the chiropractor is an amazing resource for you. Not only are they, they going to start with your adjustment, but they're going to teach you how to eat right. They're going to teach you the, the tenets of thinking properly. And they're going to teach you the, the tenets of uh, exercise and moving the body properly. So I think that you've really cornered into the eat well part and the, 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 the food part. Um, and it's really cool to hear that you've had some success early on of people really seeing that this is a, a, a really a, an important part for the community. It is. And it's, we also didn't have a hub, you know, in our community where people could just come and, and commune and maybe have a cup of coffee. Uh, it's a small town. It's about 6,000 people. And, and so I've created, I've created that space um, visually the space. I love interior design. So that's kind of another love of mine. So the, I've created this space where it feels like home and, and, and what I did is I just took how I, how I started my office, I put it into the restaurant business. And I'm told all the time that the way that I'm running this restaurant is so unconventional. And I, so it focuses on, on, on education. So even when it comes, you know, it comes to the staff, when someone walks into the restaurant, my staff is very knowledgeable about what's in everything. Um, how can this, you know, even down to like, well, why would you choose sourdough bread? Well, because it's partially fermented and then why? And then explaining that. So morsels, little morsels of information that people can take home with them. And I found that um, it needed to be approachable. You know, there are some places where it's very um, where I would go to eat, where it's very, you know, I'd say like granola, you know, and it's maybe all raw foods. But this is this is I hope that this is bridging the gap and it's approachable for someone who is eating clean already, but someone who is not and wants to. So mm -hmm. it, 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 I love it. It's been very exciting. No, it's really cool. And before we uh, started talking, once again, we were discussing how my eating patterns have changed and how intermittent fasting is something that we both practice and mm -hmm. how SET oil is in both of our coffees. And, <laughs> you know, how, how if you start practicing like healthy eating and you start implementing healthy choices, um, your body actually does get the fuel that it needs. And you, you do have the self-confidence to stay fit and you don't get brain fog and feel crummy by two o'clock in the afternoon feeling like you don't have the energy to, to push on through your day. And that, I mean, honestly, for me being who I am, that's where I was headed. I was, I was, I was honestly, I was working myself um, to eat. And then I would, I would tell myself that eating was going to get me to the next level of, you know, being able to push through the next thing. But I noticed that the eating habits that I had, I was exhausting myself. Yeah. And yeah. I don't, and you know, you see so many people follow that pattern long term, and then what happens to them? They become pre diabetic, they yeah. become insulin resistant, they become to the point where they don't even know how much of a, an effect that eating poor choice food is having an impact on the rest of their life. Yeah, they're on that hamster wheel, you know. But I think deep down, people do know that they need to make changes. And I've seen this in our restaurant because of, of the kitchen. And the kitchen has attracted people. You know, I thought in the beginning, oh, I'm going to get all these like healthy vegans that are going to want to work for me. Um, you know, I, I, that was not the case. I have people that, that my kitchen staff have really poor eating habits. And so uh, I challenge them all the time. And it's been so great to watch this transformation of them working what they're used to working in a restaurant environment where they drink coffee all day long. That that's what keeps them going. So their adrenals are completely fried. But mm -hmm. now, you know, they live it there in this environment, this nurturing environment, and we're teaching them and we're empowering them. And uh, my, one of my one of my head chefs just this week, you know, he said, I'm going to start eating. We have a shake that's called the clean green. 
And he goes, I'm going to eat a clean green every single day. And I almost like fe fell over. I said, finally, after, <laughs> after eight months, you're going to actually eat the food that's here. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's just, it's been, it's been an interesting journey and there's so much more to come. I'm excited. Exactly. That's where I was going next. Uh, where do you see yourself in the next uh, two to five years with this process? Um, well, I, you know, I don't know what's going to happen because I had absolutely no idea the response that we would have gotten um, with Properly Fueled Now. I really, my vision was, okay, I'm going to open this restaurant and I'm going to give people jobs and I'm going to feed my community great food. It's not, a, it wasn't financially driven. Um, and now I see it on a much larger scale. I, I definitely want to open more locations. Maybe I'll franchise. I'm, I'm, I'm in the works of creating um, the framework for that and also putting some of our signature key items in stores. That's so cool. And, you know, I, I think that that's uh, we, we need more leadership, especially with how people eat. And I think that we've been uh you know, sent up to the send up the river with uh, no paddle sometimes, and we're expected to make it to shore safely without knowing um, what's good for us. And like, if you, I, I'm sure you understand nutrition at a whole different level than I do. But um, the the food that we eat is just full of so many things hidden in there. Like, even if we ate like a bun, like the amount of stuff that you can't pronounce that's in a bun, like <laughs> that, that's mind boggling to me. And, and on this, uh, this healthy, uh, happy, healthy guys, uh, program, this ketabolic diet I'm on, they're like, if you can't pronounce the word, you can't eat it. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm, I've been very much a stickler about that. And when I said before, you know, that I've been told that it's been unconventional the way that I'm running this restaurant, it's because I'm always going back to the why, you know, it's, it's not about, it's not about the numbers, you know, it's not about how much money I can make on this product because I probably could make a lot more, but it comes down to my integrity and that I'm delivering what I say that I'm going to, that I'm going to deliver. And I just trust and hope that um, eventually that's, you know, it, w it will come. I mean, it's been fruitful, but what I'm saying is that that's not, that's not everything, you know? Yeah, I mean, monetary gain is good once we put something out into the universe and we realize that it's an energy that comes back to us when we give. And I think that giving people good choices for healthy food is definitely uh, a, a giving cycle. So it makes sense that you've created something that could be um, branded and franchised and get more communities on that healthy eating habit. Um, you know, honestly, Grand Junction, where I live, we don't have anything like what you what you're doing. Um, uh, it's a smaller community. There's 60,000 people out here. It's uh, it's absolutely amazing. If you've ever never been here, Grand Junction mm -hmm. is it's it's a gem in the United States. Like it's right in the middle of a old old uh, volcano. So we have like these beautiful cliffs that surround the city. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, but we do we do have our, our limitation of healthy food choices out here. So I, I, I mean, we, we, we're, we're getting a bit more foodie from what I understand, but I've only been here like a month and a week. So, um, yeah, I think there's always room for better food choices in smaller in smaller communities, because like I said, when we just jumped on, you know, when you when you check out what's going on in most cities, like more, most smaller cities, you get the Pizza Huts, you get yeah. the Taco Bells, yeah. you get the Kentucky Fried Chickens, you get like all these like choices of food that are fast, but it doesn't make the, the, the population any more healthy and give them the vitality that they need. Right, right. Well, I was always frustrated too, because after a day of practicing, you know, I didn't always feel, even though I love to cook, I didn't feel like going home and preparing a meal. So with that, I, I, I wanted something that was convenient, something that was quick, um, something that was visually beautiful and visually appealing. And that was going to nurture, that was going to nurture me. And so that's hopefully uh, what I've what I've created. And the challenge too is there are so many choices. Sometimes people say to me, "I don't know how to eat." You know, like should I be gluten free? Should I be dairy free? Should I be paleo? Should I be ketogenic? You know. And so, <laughs> um, I think people have to figure that figure that out on their own. But if they have a place to figure that out and it's approachable, it's a heck of a lot easier. Because as a, as a chiropractor, I'm always talking about nutrition and how important it is. But for someone who's never really done that or doesn't cook, 
that's it's hard to step off. It's hard to step off and start those changes. And if now that I have a place to say, you know, just just go to properly field and just start eating this, you know what I mean? Or get meals for the week mm -hmm. and then see how you feel. Yeah, I, I think so much of it is we have to run a better system for our performance of our body. And most people don't look at it as we have to put ourselves into a system or a schedule. But the people that have the most money, they run financial systems that work good for them. The people that have the best health, they run uh, healthy choice systems that work best for them. So honestly, we have to run our bodies like a business almost. We have to think like, if I put this in, the performance will suck. If yeah. I put this in, the performance will go up. And if I behave and put myself on a sleeping schedule that's you know good for my performance then your body performs better but if we think that we can do whatever we want because we have free will i think that that's the choice that gets most of us into trouble absolutely i, I completely agree <laughs> i think so, your body will let you know so we have to give ourselves recommended treatment plans for, <laughs> yeah. for, for daily performance i like that recommended daily <laughs> treatment plans and we have to think about, you know, the eating right, the thinking right, the moving right. So, you know, drinking enough water, um, mm -hmm. meditating, getting your body to sweat every day. Mm -hmm. I mean, th these things that we know, but the things that most people don't have time for because they're stuck on the hamster wheel of the 40 hour work week and raising families and having, you know, they just want to live for the weekend. But you don't mm -hmm. live for the weekend when you don't fuel your body properly. Oh, that's true. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> because then you're exhausted and tired and you don't have the energy to carry on. Yeah. And then you, then you leave the blank spots for your family because now you're self-serving when you should be spending family time. Right. And even us chiropractors and we know all these things and we have the knowledge doesn't always mean that we're practicing that. I mean, I, I there was a time that I was guilty of that as well, where I just completely burned out. I mean, my joints were, were hurting everywhere. I had gotten some blood work done. I had really high RA levels and it was like my body was saying, excuse me, you might have all this knowledge, but you're not practicing it right now. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, but just getting back on, tr on track again, you know, and, 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 and implementing certain simple things that we can do on a daily basis. It's not that we have to be perfect at all times, you know, and, and that's kind of what I say to, to, to clients in the office. It's like, it's not about perfection. It's about it's about starting it and it's about making these small changes so we can make really small changes. An example would be like I dehydrate the nuts that we serve. It's a pain in the ass to dehydrate the nuts. It's much easier to just buy the nuts, you know, or buy roasted nuts. It's cheaper. But I know that dehydrating and soaking nuts is much better for your body. And it's going to be a small change and they, people might not even know that they're eating dehydrated nuts. I know. You yeah, know? That's, a, that, that's really cool. And you know, what you're saying there is it's, it goes back to maybe you've read the greatest book of all time and you read it 20 years ago or 25 years ago and you never went back to read it again. Yeah. And you felt like you know the knowledge 25 years later yeah. just because you read it once. And I think that that has something to say about the chapters of our life. If we don't continuously feed ourselves with good knowledge and reinforce ourselves with positive thoughts and to make sure that we, we know that, you know, we're, we're, we're on a clean diet here. <laughs> You have to have a clean diet up there too. And I think mm -hmm. that that's, that's the hardest part. Even like you said, with chiropractic, you get that mental subluxation. You think just because you're at a certain level of achievement that you, you've figured it out, <laughs> that you, that you've biohacked yourself into like this, like this world that you don't get affected by the, the poor life choices. Exactly. And I, I think that so many people come into this world and they realize that they're starting to start to diminish with their life force. And they don't know how to reel themselves back in. Very true. So, yeah. So at this point in the, the conversation, I'm going to ask you, if, is there anything that we didn't cover that you'd like to share with our audience today? No, I think we covered qu quite a bit. Awesome. Well, um, if people are interested in what you're doing, um, how do they reach out to you? And is there any type of uh, web addresses you can share with people um, about your, your restaurant? Sure. It's uh, www.properlyfueled.com. And if you have any questions or yeah, 
I don't know. I mean, I'm not really selling anything or promoting anything uh, if, if someone's interested in it and knowing more, maybe something that they can do, you know, in their community, they can certainly reach out to me. I mean, I'm, I'm available for, for any questions. Awesome. Well, I think that that's really sweet of you to share your information with people because, you know, sometimes people have big ideas. And obviously there was one man that had a big idea that fueled the future of chiropractic. So sometimes you just get a big idea and you cultivate it, you teach it, you learn it, and then you systemize it. And now what we could do is get uh, properly fueled everywhere. And uh, I think that that's a, a really ambitious idea. But if, if anybody's watching this on the replay and you are interested in getting in touch with myself or Denise, please send us a Facebook Messenger message or put some comments down there and we'll be sure to get back to everybody. And I'm going to close out again saying thank you to MoveWell University, Dr. Todd Pickman. If you guys want to get the MoveWell part of your uh, chiropractic lifestyle down, reach out to Dr. Todd and he has some amazing programs that you can get into that will get your patient's bodies healthier to hold the adjustment long-term. And with that being said, Denise, uh, my heart goes out to you. Thank you for uh, becoming my Thank chiropractic. You. Thank you for becoming my chiropractic friend today. And I look forward to the time where we connect in person. And uh, I'd love to have you on in the future as a guest, as things start uh, building for you as uh, you know, whatever your big vision is. <laughs> Thank you. I really appreciate it. It's been a joy meeting you. Awesome. Well, have a blessed rest of your day and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Thank you for listening to Cairo Hustle Live. Don't forget to subscribe and check back next week to continue hustling.